Hey guys, it's LC Persona Q here with part 2 of the second episode of the Then and Now series, in which we've been taking a look at my Link clay models. So, as I said in the last part, the first Link model brought about the rough concept and the size. The second Link model brought about a really good face in the addition of items like the sword and the shield. The third Link model brought about a really good body shape, and then the fourth one combined all that with the addition of it being really really small to kind of make point that, you know, I was experienced enough to make a Link model look really good, however, make him a different size and, you know, kind of downsize everything. But this next Link model coincides really well with the fourth one, and it's essentially the same one, just a little different, and it's, again, Link from Brawl, but he's in his full size this time. And something that I really think makes this one significant is how I pretty much took that one and everything I said about these three and replicated it just in a bigger scale but essentially what that would be what that would look like is like if this one never existed and it just went like that that's pretty much how it would happen but again the key point that I need to make note of is that I went from small to big so with those two things considered um, we get this guy. And again, just kind of going to praise him. I really like that face. I think that's one of the best Link faces I've ever sculpted, at least using this colored clay onto a clay model. He's really well proportioned. Uh, all the detail is there. And at least, if I'm missing any detail, I mean, I definitely attempted to get all the detail that I could. Um, he has hair going all the way around his head, which I think is a first at this point. And just overall, again, it really sums up what we've been through at this point. So, those are the first five, and now we get into a really drastic turning point. Notice that so far the first three are Ocarina of Time, and then the next two were Brawl, more or less in the same shape. However, now we're going to get into a completely different field, and that's Majora's Mask. So, for the first... Two points I want to make is that this Link is really different because not only is he from Majora's Mask, but it's a young Link. I did make a young Link, I think, prior to this, but I didn't consider it a turning point, and I considered this one turning point a lot more. Um, because, first of all, this is the only young Link that I'm going to show in this video, especially with, you know, those five Links as they are, being all adult Link and, you know, young Link. I've taken what I've learned with adult Link for these five models and applied it to Young Link while maintaining Young Link's characteristics. In addition to that, the fact that he's from Majora's Mask, again, you know, I'm starting to kind of expand and go on to different looks for Link, different games, and it really shows in this model that I know what I'm doing compared to, you know, the ones from, you know, the first part. The eyes and the face they look like Young Link. It doesn't look like, you know, Adult Link or anything. And I think the hair looks really nice. It does go all the way around. I want to point that out, is that it goes all the way around. And we have that hat swoop that is, has become a signature of my Link now. The detailing is really nice. I make sure I get all the little loops in the belt so that it actually looks like, you know, he's wearing a belt like he should be. The little cuffs on his boots, which I don't think are really relevant on any model except that one, but then for the next two, it's completely, you know, gone. Different shield design, different sword design, both with as much detail as I can get in at the time again, but it still looks nice for the time. And then kind of a plain sword holder, but that aside, another point I want to make is the scale, because this is the first really large link. I mean, it might not be large in terms of, like, height, but it's large in terms of the amount of clay that was used to make him. So, all things considered, you know, at, at this point, at, at this point, Link is getting a lot easier to sculpt, as you can tell from what I just explained. So, as I make room, I prepare for the last Link model that I want to show off, and I'll probably have to move these guys a little bit, because he's going to kind of join in the back. He's really tall, and that is... My painted Link from Twilight Princess, which is, he's not the most recently sculpted Link, but he's the most recently sculpted, like, turning point Link that I want to show. 
And this was made probably about... Um, I didn't, like, sign the bottom or anything like I do now. But I would probably assume that this was... Probably five years ago. That would probably be a, a decent assumption. So, the first point that I want to make, and it's the most obvious, is that this is painted. As I've said now with my master sculpts and how I'm doing my master sculpts, is I want those models to look as great as they can with as much detail as they can. And I wouldn't do that unless I was really secure with sculpting a model. And I know this isn't a master sculpt, but back at this time, for me to even consider making a link as hard as link is as you guys have been telling from you know what i've explained for these models as hard as link is for me to go along and paint one with you know co colored paint detail the eyes in and make sure that i can get as much detail on this as possible definitely shows something about how confident i am with sculpting link so there's there's that factor and the fact that again this is from twilight princess it's not from ocarina of time which i've been sculpting already it's not from you know, Majora's Mask, it's not from Brawl or anything, it's Twilight Princess, and I think Twilight Princess is probably one of the hardest uh, links to capture in sculpture form and art form and anything, really. So, I'm kind of just going to go around and, again, point out the detail. I'm able to get a lot more detail with the paint anyway, back then and now, with, you know, when I sculpt my clay model, so that's why there's probably more detail on this than any of the other ones. But I got those little packs on the back there, detail on his whatever that is I got logo on the base which I wish he didn't cover but he kind of ended up covering the whole thing and that's another point too I made a base for him aside from the fact that he needed to stand a base I want this to look professional and you know I get this he's has the sword his face and his head and his body it's all proportionate pretty much just sums up everything that I've gone over in these past six link models at this point so overall this is the end result of however many years of work this is like seven at this point i think or maybe it would be only five or i don't know i'm not really good with dates again i that's the one thing i wish i did for all these clay models way back then and that's why i do it now is i date my clay models with when i finish them because i just I just have no idea, you know, how long ago some of these were. So, I can only go on assumptions. But again, this link pretty much exemplifies everything that I've talked about at this point. Plus the size, which I just mentioned for the Majora's Mask link, is that he, you know, towers above everybody else. But that just goes along with confidence and what I'm able to, to scope now. So... That was the Then and Now series episode for the expansion and evolution of my Link model. However, we're not done yet. As I did with the Sonic one with that um, kind of bonus episode, I, or bonus part, I do have some bonus stuff that I want to show for this Link one. If you notice, I didn't talk about Toon Link at all, despite having sculpted more Toon Link models than Young Link models, actually. But um, Toon Link was sculpted all throughout these Link models, and... You know, I, I didn't include him because Toon Link is, has an entirely different sculpt than Adult Link or Young Link or anything like that. He's just an entirely different field, in my opinion. But I still wanted to show off the evolution of him because I have evolved with Toon Link as well. So in the Part 3 conclusion, we'll take a look at my Toon Link. So stay tuned for that, guys.